How's it going guys? Welcome back to ESP Poker. We are on our way to the win to play in their 1-3 game with a max buy-in of 500. And with that being said, let's get into it. The first hand we play is Queen-10 of Diamonds in middle position. Couple limps to me, I bump it up to 15 and we get two calls. We see a flop in position that comes Ace-10-3. It checks to me, and with second pair here, I elect to bet $20 and only get a call from the player to my right. The turn comes another 3, and I think this is one of those cards where we want to slow down on. If he has an ace, he's probably going to call a bet here. So when he checks it, I decide to check it back. The river comes a 4, and I think this is a card where we could consider going for value. But when he checks it to me, I decide to check it back. And he ends up having 8-10 offsuit here, so we both only have a pair of 10s, and we're going to chop it up. Here I'm under the gun with King-Queen of Hearts. I make it 15 to go, and we get a call from the player to my left and the big blind. See a flop 3 ways that comes Ace-King-5 with 2 diamonds. The big blind checks, I check, and the player to the left checks as well. The turn comes another 5. And looking to get some value from a flush draw, and maybe just take down the pot now, I decide to bet 15, and the player to the left of me calls, and the big blind folds. The river comes the deuce of clubs, and at this point, if he has an ace, he's probably going to call any bet, and if he has a missed flush draw, I feel like he's just going to check it back. So I decide to check, and he does check it back, but he ends up having ace nine of clubs here, so we are no good. Here I'm in the cutoff with pocket 10s. There's one limp to me. I make it 15 to go. We get a call from the button and the under the gun limper. We see a flop three ways that comes ace nine five rainbow. The under the gun player checks. I check and the button checks as well. The turn comes a four and at this point I am just tired of betting not top pair. So when it checks to me, I check and it checks through. But then the river comes an unexpected 10 giving us a set. Under the gun checks, and when it gets to me, I decide to bet 25 here. I wish I went a little smaller, because it seems like no one has that good of a hand. The button decides to fold, but then under the gun goes pretty deep into the tank. He thinks about it for a while, and eventually elects to fold. Oh well, but we finally drag a pot this night. We then proceed to go on a losing streak. I just kept raising hands pre-flop and not connecting with the board. So my stack drops to a little under 400. But then we pick up pocket nines. I'm in middle position and after a couple limps, I make it 15 to go and only get a call from the player to my right. We see a flop heads up that's pretty spooky. It comes 666. He checks it to me and looking to get some value. I like to bet $15 and he makes the call. The turn comes the three of diamonds and he checks it to me again. I think the right play is to bet here, but in the moment I liked it to check because I wanted it to look like I was just taking a stab at the flop and I didn't really have anything. That way if I bet on the river, I could get some more value. The river comes the king of spades and he checks it to me for a third time. Now based on the way I played this hand, I feel like I can still get value from an ace high type holding. So I like to bet $20, and he makes the call. I show my hand, and we're good. He indeed did have ace high, and although I don't think I played this hand perfectly, I'm still glad I got some value on the river there. Not too long after, we pick up the exact same two nines under the gun. I make it 15 to go, and we get two calls. We see a beautiful flop three ways that comes 10-9-3 with two clubs, so we flop middle set. I decide to bet 15 here, and we get one call. The turn comes an ace, 
he checks it to me, and here's where I made a mistake. I decided to bet bigger than I should have. For some reason, I thought if he had the ace high flush draw, he's gonna call any bet. Which although that could be true, that doesn't account for other draws he could have. So in the moment, I decided to bet $50, and he decides to fold and flashes me queen jack offsuit for a straight draw. So looking back, I would have liked to bet around $35 to $40, but still, we drag this pot. Here I'm on the button with king queen offsuit, couple limps to me, I make it 15, and we end up getting three callers here. So we go four ways to a flop that comes ace nine three with two diamonds. It checks all the way to me, and I consider throwing out a bet here, but being so multi-way, I decide to just check. The turn brings us a little bit of help, it comes the 7 of diamonds, now we pick up the nut flush draw. It checks to middle position who decides to bet $16. The player to the right of me calls, and with the nut flush draw, I call as well. The other player folds, and we go 3 ways to a river, that comes the queen of spades. So although we don't get there with the flush, we do now pick up a pair. Middle position now bets $26. And he's been a pretty active player, I think it's possible he's bluffing here. And based on the bet size in relation to the pot, I think I can make the call here and be profitable. But before I can do that, the player to my right calls his bet, and when it gets to me, I think calling here just doesn't make sense. The player to the right of me is probably calling with better than my hand. So I let it go, and it turns out we were correct. Middle position didn't have anything and the player to my right ended up calling with a pair of aces. Over the next hour, I just couldn't get anything going. I was getting good hands, raising them pre-flop, but just having to fold on heavily multi-way flops where I wasn't connecting at all. And then this absolute maniac sat down at the other end of the table. He was playing almost every hand, but he was winning almost every hand. And this is the first hand I played against him. Here I'm under the gun and look down at king queen suited. I make it 15 to go. It folds to the maniac as mentioned in middle position, and he elects to 3 bet it to 45. It folds back to me, and realistically, this should just be a fold. I'm gonna be out of position, but in the moment, I elected to make the call. We see a flop heads up that comes ace 10 8. I decide to check, and now he bets 40. It's a pretty weird spot because he's definitely capable of bluffing, but I just don't see how I can make the call here with king high. So I let it go, and he ends up showing queen jack offsuit for the bluff. Oh well, on to the next one. The last hand of note. I'm on the button with ace king offsuit. At this point, I'm just fed up with raising small, going heavily multi-way to flops, and having a fold. So after there's three limps to me, I decide to raise pretty big. I make it 30 to go. And now the maniac starts wondering if he should call or not. And I just let him know truthfully what I'm thinking. Just put me out of my misery, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> At this point. <laughs> Eventually what I said persuades him to make the call. The player to the right of me makes the call as well. So we're going three ways to a flop that comes queen 10 8. When it checks to me, this is one of those spots where I really need to be keeping the aggression going, but in the moment, I decided to check it back. The turn comes another 10, and now the maniac leads out for $25. The player to the right of me folds, and here with two overcards and a jack giving me a straight, I like to make the call. We go heads up to a river that comes a 5, and now the maniac leads out for a hundred dollars. My head is in the blender trying to make a decision here. As we saw from the previous hand, he is more than capable of bluffing. But at the same time, he could be making this bet with like a rivered pair of fives that we lose to. After further consideration, I just don't think I'm good enough to make the call here with ace high. So I elect to make the fold. I decided to fold heads up to see if he would show his hand, and that he does when he shows me 7-4 offsuit. An absolute bluff, well played by him. At this point, I was just getting torched and not playing well, 
So I decided to rack up and hit the cage. So we were in for 500, out for 257 for a loss of 243, bringing our 34 episode total to a profit of 1160. You know, started the night just really slow, could not get anything going, and towards the end of the night just started making poor decisions, and at that point it was time for me to head out. The goal for the Vegas trip is to be net positive, so hopefully tomorrow I can bounce back and make that happen. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one.